It is a pleasure to catch up with Chris Davis. He's at the Coliseum on this Sunday. Katie, you're looking great. You got the number two chain still popping out. Love to see that. Uh, how are you doing and what's keeping you busy these days? Uh, I'm doing great. I got, uh, got my family that I look out for. Got two little boys that are healthy and getting big. So uh, just looking out for them and um, just, uh, just enjoying my peace at home. Wait, two kids and I don't see any gray hairs, man. What's going on? How are you doing this? <laughs> <laughs> they're, uh, they're keeping me young. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, just, just running, running around, playing soccer, playing baseball. So uh, just keeping them busy. Um, so I, I know cars are... Me. Sorry, sorry to cut you off there. I know cars are keeping you busy too. Uh, you went through like the full certification of automotive school. So aside from the family stuff, which is awesome, uh, what else are you doing? Uh, that was it. I just graduated from AAI, Arizona Automotive Institute, and, um, you know, it's just been um, an experience, not, not coming from a background in cars, but always liking cars, and uh, I got to learn a lot, make a lot of new friends, um, so uh, that, that's been keeping me busy, just hanging out in my garage, working on my cars. So uh, what's in the garage? Well, my favorite that I like to brag about um, is a 61 Impala. Um, and that's my project car. That's been uh, giving me a headache. Um, <laughs> but uh, I also have a Shelby Mustang and a Dodge Viper that I don't touch. Um, they're already flawless. so I. I just mainly work on the Impala. It's amazing how some hobbies actually get you. It's like golf. They get you frustrated, but you love it. Like you can't get enough of it. You put even more work into it probably. Um, yeah. want to want to switch gears to baseball. And no disrespect to your time in Milwaukee when you broke into Major League Baseball. But I think the stats say it. And I think your body language while you were in Oakland A, I mean, those were the best times of your big league career, right? No question about it. Yeah, absolutely. What, what was it Absolutely. about the what was it about the experience in Oakland and, and tell me about some of the people and like as you kind of reflect on it being back there today like who comes to mind what comes to mind what specific memories? Oh, uh, there's a lot from um, Bob Malvin to Stephen Vogt to Marcus Simeon. Um, when I came over and got traded, I I felt really at home and welcomed. Um, you know, there was no pressure in a sense to succeed it was just kind of free and um, the only thing was about winning um, I got that sense of culture from the fans um, the fans accepted me for who I was and I think it, I just I, there was a sense of uh, just comfort when I came to Oakland and I appreciate that so much because that that molded me to become who I was so it was uh, definitely the best years of my life you know the coaching staff um, everybody um, it was just a it was an amazing time this next question is a little bit weird I know you can't see me right now but I'll do it for the audience like between swings you used to step out of the box dig back in and you used to do that thing with your left hand your front hand like uh, you were kind of like timing yourself out or you know what i'm talking about right i've always wanted to ask you yeah yeah what, what were yeah. you doing in your head what was that um well that that was like a like a reminder to myself that uh to work inside the baseball it's a feel thing so like it would i would step out and instantly do it and then it became such a habit that it was more of like comforting kind of um soothing in the situation but but mainly that's what i told myself you know work inside the baseball yeah i just remember watching the batting stance guy i don't know if you're familiar with him on social media he likes to complimentary uh complimentary uh uh, imitate uh, batters and their stances. And that was kind of the one thing he was doing to you. And I'm like, that's it. That's KD right there. Nah, I, I got it from my teammates. I, everybody pretty much let me yeah. know. Like it was a weird <laughs> thing, but like, it was like cool. Yeah. So I, I, uh, you know, like I liked it, you know, I just rolled with it. 
You know, when you look at the stats, I mean, you had those four straight years of, of a 247 batting average precisely. I don't even know if anybody could do that if they, like, tried. It's, it's amazing how that happened. You also had those three years of 40-plus homers uh, each season in a row. What were you trying for offensively? Like, were, were you always trying to go up there and, and hit home runs? Because you did that a lot in Oakland. Yeah, absolutely not. That never, never worked that way. Um, during that time, I think I was so focused in my preparation, my routine, my will to get better. Um, my, my attitude was there. Um, just like my routine, my, my work ethic, um, the home runs were just kind of like a result of my work. And I really struggled a lot when I put pressure on myself you know, that, that's one thing I could go back and change. Um, I kind of changed after I signed that contract. And um, after I led or after I got hurt, you know, that, that's when I really started to, to struggle. Yeah, I was going to bring that up. I, I actually didn't want to bring it up, but I, I've always wanted to ask you, when you ran into that railing in Pittsburgh, I think it was the 5th of May that year, um, and then kind of went through that injury. Was there stuff even going on behind the scenes that you just couldn't talk about? Like, it, it really was uh, sidetracking you. I mean, it really was holding you back, wasn't it, that injury? Yeah, I, looking back on it, I, I took a bad attitude turn. Um, I got frustrated with myself, like, sitting out. I put a lot of pressure on myself to get back in and put up numbers and really that was like selfish on my part um, because I, I then wasn't really focusing on winning and my teammates, I was like, I was so focused about what I could do and um, I just kind of uh, f turned for the worse, you know. Um, that was tough, I, I was really frustrated in that time and I wish I could have go, gone back and change my attitude and perspective on things um, but um, things happen for a reason and um, I learned from it well I, I appreciate your honesty there and I don't want to make this uh, too dark and negative so I'm gonna end on a couple positives here I thought it was really cool in 2021 when you came back to the A's um, it was basically those final 20 games I know you started that year with Texas and then finished with Oakland what, what, what was in your heart in that comeback and I know you spent a little t bit of time with the aviators and you were crushing it down there literally and then I had heard that like Matt Chapman was literally one of the guys who called you up and said man Katie you gotta you got to get back with this. Like we want you, we need you. How, how much of that can you share? <laughs> that was uh, that was that was amazing. Um, yeah, I was I was at home, still kind of working out, hoping to get a call. And um, Chapman just uh, texted me one day. Was like, um, yeah, we need you. Get you know, get back out there. And I said, yeah, I'll go. I'll go back out and play. Um, but yeah, I started in AAA. I got to hang out with uh, some minor league dudes, and um, that was fun. That was a great summer. Um, just being around baseball again, uh, being away, you you uh, you just forget how fun the game is. And when I came back, that's what my, my focus was: just enjoying the game again. And what do you know? I started hitting home runs and having fun like I was at home, you know. Um, so, yeah, it was just, uh, just you can do anything if your attitude's in the right place. So that's all I got. Well, it felt right. It felt really right when you came back. Last thing for you here, uh, you know we obviously have heavy hearts. We're counting down the final games for the A's at the Coliseum. I don't know if this is your final trip back, probably, most likely, seeing that you live in Arizona. Uh, what are your emotions like just coming back and knowing that you're, you're probably going to see something here today that uh, this weekend that you probably won't ever see again? Yeah, it's an amazing place, the Coliseum, um, amazing fans. Um, it's all going to be missed. And um, I hope I hope nothing but the best of all the workers, you know, all the security guards to the clubhouse guys. They they are amazing people and um, it, it will be missed and it's just been kind of sad. So um, I feel I feel bad for them and you know I, 
I think everything happens for a reason, so well, we something good can come from it. I certainly sure. hope so too, man. We really appreciate you hanging out with us and uh, we'll enjoy watching you on the broadcast today. Chris Davis, be well, my friend. Thank you, Brody.